when they talk about who is the best team that North Hills has ever had, I'm rolling with this squad over anybody else in North Hills history. Hi folks, welcome back. It's basketball time once again here in Western Pennsylvania and the expectations are higher than ever this year for the North Hills Indians. In fact, you can feel the anticipation all around the community as they return all five of their starters from last season with four of them. That's right, four of them who are seniors and they have who some might say might be the best prospect in the entire area in sophomore Royce Parham. Now a little bit about Royce, he stands six foot seven and this young big man received first team all conference recognition last year, but he did it as a freshman. Now Royce has picked up two division one offers from local universities, including Robert Morris and Duquesne. And he holds interest I hear from Penn State and West Virginia. Now getting into their seniors, manning the point, they have Will Zeke Blass, and man, can that kid handle the ball. At the two guard, Matt Seidel is one of the best three-point shooters in all of 6A, shooting an amazing 42.5% behind the arc. But equally impressive at the forward position, they have Devin Burgess and Alex Smith. Now Devin is a six-foot-four John Carroll recruit. Now Alex is the brother of North Hills alum Nick Smith, a current player at Nova Southeastern, a top Division II school in the country. And you might remember back to Nick leading his North Hills Indian team to the WPIAL championship game at the meet in 2016. And in doing so, he became the fourth person in North Hills history to score 1,000 points. But now it's his brother's Alex turn as he is currently on pace to join the 1,000 points club as he starts the year sitting at 706 points. Now Alex is also a four-year starter, so all eyes are on him to see how he will lead his North Hills Indians basketball team as they start the season. Buzz Davis, uh, head boys basketball coach at North Hills High School. I was an assistant at North Hills uh, for about six years, going back a long time, uh, and was involved with the elementary program too. Was a year with the middle school, I think five years with the varsity, either a JV or varsity assistant, and then uh, was gone for seven years as the head coach uh, at Vincentian. And then when the job became available, um, it was always a job that you know I wanted to come back to. I've been in the area, you know, my entire life, lived in the North Hills for a time when I was a kid, know a lot of people, so it's always been a, you know, dream job for me. Going into this season, um, um, I think the one thing that really helped us early on was when we started back in April, they realized that, you know, we, we all realized, but it was important that the players realized that they needed to take some ownership and some responsibility and say, like, where can I get better individually? And what do we have to do to be better as a team? Uh, and it happened right away. You know, it wasn't a thing where, you know, you felt like, uh-oh, you know, here we go, we're reverting back to some of these habits where when things get tough, we're not, you know, responding. Um, and so as a result, probably by July, beginning of July, we kind of felt like, hey, we could be as good as anybody around here. Uh, I knew we were going to be good. We, we had a great summer league. We lost like one or two games all summer, so I, I knew we were going to be good. It's championship or bust mentality. I um, knew we were going to be good, but I definitely didn't think we'd be as good as we were. But that being said, it was about as good as it could have been.
Can you describe your relationship between you and Alex? Yeah, I say it's a love-hate relationship. Yeah, um, we got, get under each other's skin a lot, um, but at the end of the day, um, I'm grateful for it. Uh, he pushed me to be better. I remember in middle school we'd argue a lot about who's better, and you can you can say whatever you want. I think I'm better. Don't start acting up in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Number five, a 6'3 senior, Alex Smith. Working on a weekend like usual. Way off in the deep end like usual. Swear they passed us, they doing too much. Haven't done my taxes, I'm too turned up. Virgil got a paddock on my wrist. <laughs> my favorite game was uh, definitely the Butler game. Just because uh, I was hot that night, you know, shooting it pretty well. We blew him out, it was exciting. Uh, section rivalry game, so yeah, it was exciting. Life is good. For the cheapest ring on the finger of How the flu went out to Spain to be in my domain and automata. Ooh, dropped three dollars on the rain, cause been the truck love. Ooh, I was in the trap, serving cocaine, they ain't been the same since. Ooh, hundred thousand for the cheapest ring on the Royce even put it on his head. Yeah, I know. Well, I went to chest my voice, yeah, and his chin went straight into my face. Um, got to play him again in two weeks. Friday night at our place. Okay, we got to come with the same energy, right? So, good win. Feel good about it. Not easy to come to Butler on a Tuesday night when it's like 10 degrees outside, right? I'm just hoping. I'm hoping that band starts. <laughs> I I can sleep in the back because I put all the chairs up. Um, tomorrow, here's what we're doing. We are, it was already predetermined, win or lose. 
2.15 to 4.30. We are going to go an hour and 15. I know some guys were like, is he giving us off? No, because there's a couple of things that we got to work on, okay? Here's what I like, I'm going to point out real quick, is that first time we got some foul trouble with him, and everybody else stepped up and played, okay? Because I'll be honest with you, I was like, uh-oh, what are we doing? And, you know, I was ready to head to the car when he picked up the second one. I said, well, i got to wait around a little bit. Really good, though, of stepping up when he was out. Two hours, 3.15 to 5.15. Try not to... I don't know what's going on over there. 3.15 to 5.15 on Thursday. So we're going to go two hours Thursday. And then don't forget Friday, you're off. We're going 12 to 2. So we're going to go midday. You can sleep in. You don't have school. He's such a scholar. I was going to say, that's the one thing I thought that was pretty known is more. Yeah, we're going to have to work on that. That's our gym now, by the way. The huge rejection by Royce Parham. Puts the fenders in, swatted away by Parham. Driving underneath, two hands slam, both pass to Parham. Goes up, gets the bucket, and the foul. Royce Parham now with eight points, a chance to make it nine. Off the Parham, he throws it down. Royce Parham, the two-hand jam. Mike White, and um, I'm the ninth grade basketball coach here at North Hills and help out whenever I can with the varsity and junior varsity and um, um, been involved with the program for, oh, I don't know, uh, well over a dozen years, I guess. He even used to run the youth program, but... Um, in my job, you want you want to know my regular job? Yeah. My job uh, that I make a living at is I'm a sports writer and a high school sports editor at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, a job that I have done for close to 40 years. Royce Parham made the fabulous five this year at the Post Gazette. He's only the third North Hills player to make that, and he did it as a sophomore. He's only a sixth sophomore ever to make the fabulous five. And I did a little Q&A with them, uh, and I asked each of the five players, tell me something people might be surprised to know about you. And Roy said that I was trash as a player when I was younger. And he, was, and he came to camp and he would have trouble running, he grew too fast, and he, and he wasn't that good. But when he was in eighth grade and played for me in ninth grade, I used to buzz and I would talk almost every game, and I'd, I would say, Buzz, this kid could be the one. He is going to maybe be something else. And he has turned into that. Uh, you know, he, 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 he took this team. He's, an, he's the X factor that takes a team to another level. Um, I mean, just the memories of him from this year. I mean, what did he do of, you know, scoring, dunking? You know, I, I don't think he dunked more than maybe not at all as a ninth grader. This year, Duncan left and right, blocking shots left and right. The best shot blocker is a kid that I've seen around here in Western PA in a long time, and he displayed that ability as a young player. And it's, a, it's something you can't teach, and he just has that special gift of it. And I just, you know, so many memories of him this year. I mean, the Pine Richland game, Luke Shanahan, shot, block. Luke Shanahan, shot, block. Luke Shannon shot block. Luke Shannon shot block. 
Hu Xinan, shot blocked. All by Royce. I counted them after that game. He blocked him eight times. One kid, eight times. I don't know why he kept taking the ball to him, but he kept doing it, even in the last possession. Royce Parham, special player already, could be even more special if he can, continues to grind and work at it, and what a future he has. What was your favorite moment from the season? Um, i say being Pine Richland at their gym. It was sold out, and as soon as we stepped out of the locker room, it just hit you. We played at Pine Richland. We went back in the locker room, and there was hardly anybody there. And when we ran out of that locker room, uh, and I saw everybody in the student section with their suits on and everything, and they all like got up in the air and freaked out, and I got goosebumps, and I was like, oh my god.
never saw ops, man, we signed. You know, when you say North Hills, probably you don't think of a, a basketball giant. It, it was football for so many years, but we had some successful years in in the last decade or so. We went to the semifinals three years in a row, 15, 16, 17, semifinals in 2009. Uh, so we've had some success, but nothing. This team took it to another level. somebody that I taught in fifth grade, so I've known a long time. Um, and I've always said is, you know, there's a toughness to him and he's got an edge to him. I mentioned this at the banquet, um, that if you only know him a little bit, you don't know, mm -hmm. you don't see. But there's a competitive fire that I saw when he was in fifth grade. I used to, you know, sometimes you're out of recess and you, I've observed certain things as a coach uh, and you can smile and laugh, but some of it was with you too. <laughs> like the two of you would go at each other a little bit. And I would be like, boy, this is the kind of stuff I love as a coach because there's a competitiveness. We can draw the line, you know, but, is, but the good thing is, is there's something to draw there. Uh, and, it, and it came out this year for the first time, really. He finally kind of came into his own. I'm Will Bless, I'm a senior, and I play point guard. Will Blass, uh, you know, I think a lot of the, all these seniors at one point in their careers had some adversity to overcome. Uh, and I remember Will played for me as an eighth grader on a ninth grade team, and he was so small, and he struggled some. And I remember his dad saying to me, um, when he, when he could, is there any way he could go back and play in eighth grade? And I said, no, he has to stay on the ninth grade team. Um, and we did it because we thought of what Will could be in the future. And, um, you know, he had some struggles, and boy, did he come together last year. He was the last piece of the puzzle for this team this year of coming together and how he played. He was that last piece that had to be fitted in at point guard. And what a job he did. And yet... Folks get down in the sunshine. Sunshine. I started playing basketball probably around kindergarten, but with these with Alex, I was playing in fourth grade. Just bees and things and flowers. playing with these guys in high school. My life, my life, my life, my life in the sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine. Matt Seidel. I'll tell you what, I remember Matt Seidel when he used to come to camp, basketball camp, summer camp, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. He'd cry when he lost. He'd cry when things didn't go well. Seriously, he did. <laughs> and some kids do that, but he did. He used to cry. And it, but I remember going to watch, I'd go watch him play in eighth grade, seventh grade for when he was playing for St. Sebastian. And uh, just the way he handled himself on the court, he just had a certain composure about him that a lot of kids didn't have. And then he developed. Uh, and he went to North Hills. And, and I will never forget it. They lost the Diocesan Championship. Um, as an eighth grader, and I went to see the game. They got blown out, and it was about a week later, I texted him and said, Matt, how you doing, how you hanging in there? And uh, he said to me, I remember that text, I'm doing good, 
I'm ready to be an Indian. I'm Matt Seidel. I'm a senior shooting guard. Matt Seidel, you know, my, my uh, real close friend when he comes to a lot of games and he made a comment earlier in the year and his comment to me was, you know, it shouldn't look that easy. Uh, and it's true, you know. Sunshine. Devin Burgess, those guys would say, you know, I, they always say, oh, don't ever say anything about Devin because coach, he'll defend him to the end. You know, I just, I, I say is he's going to do great things. Um, and I'm not talking about basketball, but there's, there's something about him. People that know him, his friends, anybody, his classmates would say, yeah, there's, there's a, he's very genuine. Um, he's just, you know, he's a sweetheart. He really is. Um, My name is Devin Burgess. I'm in 12th grade and I'm a forward. You know, Devin was a kid when he was younger. All right, I'm going to be honest, he wasn't very good. <laughs> when he was in like sixth grade, seventh, and then he'll tell you the same thing. He wasn't very good. But I remember him coming. We would have open gyms when he was in seventh grade and eighth grade for the seventh and eighth graders. And he would come, and I would, he would come early, and I would work him out. Uh, and he just wanted to get better. And he had a desire to get better. And that's what is needed if you want to get better. And Devin uh, is a kid, and I, I, I say this, a story I always remember about him. He was an eighth grader. He came to our open gym with his track uniform on. And I said, what do you have your track uniform on? He said, well, I just had a track meet. So he came from the track meet. A lot of kids wouldn't do this. Came to the open gym at like 6 o'clock. Said, Coach, i got to leave early. What do you got to leave early for? i got to leave like 7.15 because they have AAU practice. So he went from the track meet to an open gym to an AAU practice because he wanted to. And that's what the good ones do. They put in the time and the effort. And that's why Devin Burgess became a not so good player as a young kid to a very good player as a senior and junior at North Hills. And a three-year starter at a 6'8 team. And big key for us and one super young man also. Smith, I mean, arguably, you could say, you know, we've had a few good players here over the years, but you could arguably say he's the best player in the history of North Hills High School basketball. And what he's done in college uh, at, at the Division II level has really been special. But he's, I, I think he, he really is a, a role model, I think, for this program. Um, he's a kid that I remember him coming to camp every year, and he'd win every dang shooting contest, hot shot, foul shooting. He'd go home with three or four trophies every year at camp in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. 
And then I had the pleasure to coach him when he was in eighth grade. Um, um, and I like to get on him some too when he was in eighth grade playing for me. But um, uh, he's, he's the, he's set like the model for this program. He really did with how he, the number one, the talent he had, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, he was dang good. And number two, uh, how he handled himself, uh, both on the court and off the court. And uh, special, special player and special, special kid. You know, Nick came through at a time, um, and we really had a, an unbelievable run for three years where we were able to make it to uh, three semifinals, uh, one final in the district, um, won some state games. Uh, his impact on the, on the program. You know, from a numbers from a numbers standpoint, you know, all-time career scoring leader, but it was just kind of his impact that he had on the teammates and how he made everybody better. Uh, the responsibility that he took night in and night out, um, mom and dad, um, and extended family there uh, are kind of like the model of you know what you'd like all the parents to always be like. Uh, and then Alex comes through, you know four or five years after Nick had come through. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not your typical age gap uh, between big brother and little brother, but he always liked the same things I like. So it was kind of easy. Um, we always, you know, everything my friends did, we pretty much included him. So he was getting beat up on from a pretty, pretty young age. So I, I think that, that helped them actually, uh, um, you know, realize he's got to get strong. Um, but, you know, I think... His biggest transformation was um, like 10th to 11th grade. Uh, we played against guys my age, 21, 22, um, and that helped him a lot in, uh, in basketball. Did you, when you guys like played one-on-one -on -one or like a uh, horse, did you ever let him win? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Well, first of all, he doesn't have the best shot, so he's not beating me in horse. And, and second of all, uh, he's, he's yet to get me in one-on-one -on -one yet. Watching Alex, like, grow as a basketball player, um, especially this year, what advice did you give him? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of him. I told him, you know, everything, everything you put in is what you'll get out. Uh, that's kind of my advice to him. I was like, it's not going to just come, come naturally to you. So he put in a lot of work this summer, and um, he got a good result. Alex Smith, I remember when he was younger, he wasn't quite sure if he wanted to play basketball that much, I think. I remember when he was in the third and fourth grade, wasn't, his dad would say he wasn't quite sure if he wanted to be in the elementary program and play. And I, he didn't really have that love of the game, uh, I, I think. And then he developed it. Um, and I remember when he was in eighth grade playing for me on the ninth grade team, Alex Smith, and it was almost every time we played a game, coach from the other team, we'd talk before the game, and the coach from the other team would say, Oh, that's Alex Smith. How, he's Nick Smith's brother, right? Yeah. And he was known as Nick Smith's brother. And they would always say, oh, is he as good as Nick Smith? That's and a true I'm, story. Every coach, I'm, almost every coach would ask me that before every game when he was in eighth grade. And I would always say to them, I'm not doing that. I'm not answering that question because Alex Smith is his own player. And he's going to make his own path. He's going to be Alex Smith. He's not going to be Alex Smith's brother. And you know what? The next few years and he left here, he's no longer Nick Smith's brother. He's Alex Smith. I'm Alex Smith, the senior, the shooting guard on the basketball team.
I didn't say anything before the game because I knew he was going to feel, you know, a little pressured to, to get to a thousand. But I was watching. Uh, all my buddies were in uh, in town watching the game. I was on FaceTime with Johnny Stucker, uh, one of my best friends. So I was I was waiting for for like ten minutes for that thousand point to happen. But uh, I'm glad I finally did.